So I was had this really awesome experience where I was able to be in Peru at a really remote location on the beach. There was no roads in there. You pretty much had to get there in there by boat. But if you took a vehicle in there, it was a really hellacious ride. I'm going to share a screen with you now. Hold on one second. There we go. Oh. Where's my share screen? One second. There it is. Okay, let's go to here. And they wanted to plant some plants. And so I thought, hey, let's go look at the beach. We'll get all the, the different materials we could get, the wood and the bones and stuff that are washed up on the beach from all the walruses, and we'll burn them up and we'll get a charcoal going. And that's what we did there. And so this is really interesting because in this image you can see the skeletons of the wood right you can start to see that this charcoal here is forming and why am i doing this well this is going to become the base it's going to become the bottom it's going to become underneath anything i'm planting this is important charcoal remediates the soil so when i'm planting something on that soil i'm going to remediate it with a layer of charcoal and then i'll put my raised beds in above that but why would i do that well i don't know if they sprayed glyphosate. I don't know what's been there before. Not only that, the charcoal is a negative energy battery, right? So the atmosphere is positively charged. The earth is negatively charged. And whenever you have a concentrate of charcoal, you have a negative energy battery. And so what happens is, is more of the forces, the, the atmospheric forces are attracted to that negative polarity. That would be things like oxygen. Oxygen is pulled to charcoal, right? The charcoal is a drawing agent. It's a detoxifier and it brings certain things with it. Now, eventually we've got a big pile like this. You can see all those walrus bones. We threw those in there. And uh, that, by the way, makes an excellent charcoal is animal bones. And in this particular case, being on the beach, I was like, geez, there's so many bones on the beach. Let's burn them up and we'll make a really cool fertilizer. And then we will get planting. And right underneath that, you can see I even charcoaled the box. You see how it's charcoal on the outside. And underneath that, of course, that's where the charcoal goes. Then you put the soil in on top and then you plant into that. Now, this desire to use charcoal and all its many forms is something that came over many years of experimenting with detoxification substances like clay, like zeolites, like binders, like psyllium husk or flax seed or chia seed. And I eventually realized that by far the strongest and has the best track record behind it, is the best science behind it, that's for sure, is charcoal of all things. And the charcoal leads you eventually to this amazing discovery that it is an agent of transformation. Eventually, you're going to get to a garden that looks like this. I mean, that's what we're going for. This is a charcoal enriched environment. The soil has been enriched with charcoal. You can see where it where it has been and where it hasn't been because the green is there there's just more robust life now the charcoal element here is a tr is so transformational that jrr token and cs lewis they had a really wonderful club in oxford and they named that club the coal biters or the charcoal eaters this is something that's still prevalent in scandinavian mythology and in fact it was a it was an icelander i was in a in a sauna in reykjavik iceland and i was talking to a friend of mine there and he said i was talking to him about charcoal and he said have you ever heard of the of the coal biter and i was like no and he's like yeah like the icelandic myth of the coal biter and i was like i don't know what you're talking about so i dug into it and then i found out that stuff about jr token cs lewis the coal biter was the child in the icelandic home for example that was the weakest that didn't want to brave the elements didn't want to deal with the sleet and the snow and the ice and the being out on the ships and being out there with a with a sheep and you know it's really rough life there in iceland most days it's windy it's sleet and snow and ice and that person that child would from age 7 to 14 tend the home fire because back then you had to have a fire in your house they didn't have central heating they didn't have any way to heat your house except you'd have a fire burning and uh, and th there would be bits and pieces of charcoal in this case in particular with the icelanders birch and willow charcoal and then that child would eat that charcoal that was at the edge of the fire that hadn't completely calcined and turned to a powder and that charcoal would then startlingly metamorphosize that child from age 17 to 14 into the toughest the most capable the the smart artist, the one who could resist the elements, and all of the above through the transformational power of an agency of charcoal.
That's the myth and legend of the coal biter. Now, I bet you, if you're clever, you probably go, you know, as I've looked into these myths over the years and I've looked into these legends, and by the way, this legend is in the Icelandic sagas, so it's in their Iliad or in their Odyssey of their culture. As you deep, as you dig deeper into mythologies, you probably have thought, there's some truth to this. They're always presenting a truth in the midst of it, right? And so that's what's gone on here is that there's a truth hidden in all of that. And what an amazing truth that is. I have been a charcoal eater or a coal biter for many years now. Geez, I, I don't even know how many years it's been. It's probably been, I probably went hardcore in like 20, no, at least 20, yeah, 2015 is when I went hardcore. So that's about, what is that, about seven, eight years at this point. So now I'm speaking with a lot of experience of on the daily, on the regular eating charcoal, you know, not every single day, but, you know, five times a week for sure. And what, and how important it is and how, wh- how I understand it now and the power of charcoal to wake you up in the morning because it pulls all those neurotransmitters right out of your blood that are used up, that are making you drowsy. You know, when you get up in the morning and you urinate, as soon as you urinate, you start waking up because those neurotransmitters that were floating around in your body that had been used up, the serotonins that had been used up are now being excreted. So you suddenly come, you come awake. So I've done experiments with people where I've had a whole bunch of people staying at a house. And instead of them getting up and having coffee in the morning, they all get a charcoal drink in the morning, nothing else, water and charcoal, and that's it. And then they drink that and then go about their day and then report at the end of the day, what was different and startling stories because the charcoal will wake you up because it pulls those drowsy neurochemicals out of your blood. And suddenly you go, Whoa, I'm awake. What the coffee is doing is just basically pushing you past your drowsiness and just stimulating you past it, which probably I would suspect is not the healthiest way to go about it. Okay. There's another little charcoal spot. I I like this one because that was a piece of ice. Well, um, I like this one because you can see in this environment here with my farm in, in Canada, it's really hard to dig in the soil there because it's a lot of rock. You can see the rock, that big rock behind. So we got this idea of taking these cut up logs from the yard and piling them up and then putting the charcoal behind it and then putting soil in behind that and then planting right into it. You tell me, it's really, really awesome. And it really works. And when you do everything right, you get really vigorous growth. This is ginkgo. And I I've tried, I did try 13 different ginkgos on this property. It's at a very, very far north. And it was wonderful to find out that three of them survived. They could handle that level of cold and they're still going there every year. So the transformational power of fire goes just beyond the campfire, which is always wonderful. And by the way, a good source of negative ions. And interestingly, by the way, if you've ever dug into who invented the light bulb, you found out that it wasn't Thomas Edison. Um, many people are shocked to find that out. I bet you some of you are shocked to find that out. And it's worth looking up. You should dig into it and look it up. The original light bulb filament that was developed was actually a charcoal filament. And that's the patent that Edison bought. And then he went to improve the filament. And that's what he gets the credit for. Um, He did not invent the light bulb. The filament was charcoal. So next time you have a little campfire like this, and you're looking at that charcoal in that fire, you'll see that there's an electrochemical phenomenon going on there. It's not just a fire. It's not just fire and flame. There's electricity going on. You can, if you have any kind of a wool object, like I, I will have a wool poncho. If I get it near that, you, it, all of a sudden, everything will magnetize and all the, the static electricity will flame up. And so there's a, an electrical phenomenon going on with every fire. That will help you to finally go, oh, okay, I got the mystery now a little bit more. I'm starting to understand this a little bit more. Now, what we do is we'll go under a bed like this. These are our, our planting beds. And we'll go under, we'll put the charcoal underneath. And then again, we'll put the new layer of soil right over the top of that for those of you who are gardening out there. Okay, I think I've got about just about every bit of that covered. And um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to show you. I I guess I could leave that up. That's my front garden. And that's the way I like to have my yard look. You know, you've got to attract all of the elemental energies into your your yard and let the, the green glow come alive. And there you will find your magic. There you will find your entertainment. There you will find your replacement for Hollywood movies. You don't need Hollywood movies when you've got this. Um, this is where the real joy is. This is where the real magic is. That's a sea buckthorn. You can see the magic of that. And just look, look how healthy. Just, it's 
electrical. You know, that's that's what we're going for here. And um, let's see if I got anything else. Well, I think I'll leave it for that and we'll stop the share. Mm -hmm.